So to begin with knitting brioche flat in one color, uh, I've cast on 20 stitches. The first and last two stitches will just be a garter edge selvage, um, and so we'll actually work the brioche over the center 18 stitches. Um, we're going to be doing a setup row to begin with, and that just includes the slip one yarn overs and knit stitches. So to get started, we're going to knit our first edge selvage stitch. And now we're going to begin the pattern of uh, knitting one and then doing a slip one yarn over, which is so common to brioche. So again, we're going to knit that first stitch. And now to create our slip one yarn over, we're going to bring our working yarn to the front, slip that stitch purlwise, and then knit the next stitch. By having our yarn in front for that, we actually create a duplicate stitch which when worked on the other side will be the basis for our BRK or our brioche knit stitch. So to replicate that we're now going to bring the working yarn to the front, slip a stitch purlwise, knit the next one, and create that duplicate stitch. One more time, bring the working yarn to the front, slip one purlwise, knit the next stitch, and we're going to continue this across the entire row, slipping one purlwise with the yarn in front and knitting one until we get to the last stitch. You'll actually end with a slip one yarn over and then you're just going to want to knit that last stitch on the row to create the garter edge selvage stitch. Come on back when you're done. Alright, so just before we turn our work to the wrong side, I'm just going to take a, a removable stitch marker and just put it on the work so I know which is the front side or the right side. Um, simply because once you're working one color brioche, you can't tell the right side from the wrong side. With that said, you work both sides the same way, so it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme, but if you were trying to work an even number of rows, you'd want to use this technique. So now we're going to turn the work and much like the first row, we're going to knit that first selvage stitch as a garter stitch. And then we come up to a wrapped or a double stitch. This is what we created on the first row when we worked our slip one yarn over. This is also what's going to indicate how we treat this stitch. So in brioche stitch, whether you're brioche knitting or brioche purling, you always work a double stitch versus slipping a single stitch. Uh, let's see if I can pull these apart so you can see the pattern a little bit better here. But you see our first wrapped or double stitch and then we have a single stitch which is going to be a slip one yarn over. We're going to knit this double stitch, work a slip one yarn over on the single. So it does become quite self-evident. So we'll work this first as a brioche knit, simply meaning knitting two stitches together, but I suppose technically it's not two stitches because one of them is just a wrap. And much like the first side, we're going to bring our working yarn to the front, slip that single stitch knit-wise, and work, or knit two together, or brioche knit the next two stitches, keeping that yarn in front so that you create a wrapped stitch. So just to go back, we've got our garter selvage stitch, we have our brioche knit stitch, which was originally two stitches. We've created a two stitch using that slip one yarn over, and now we've knit two together, or brioche knit those next two stitches. So we're going to continue this, much like the first row, all the way across, slipping one, knitting two together, slipping one with yarn in front, and knitting two together, slipping, or slipping one with yarn in front, and knitting two together. So you're just going to continue that all the way across the row. Sorry about the zoom here guys, I'm working as a one woman show. Um, and when you get to that very last stitch you're simply going to knit it so you create that garter edge. Okay, so we finished that second row and now we're back on the right side. You can tell because the markers here. And this one looks exactly the same as when we finished the last row. We've got our garter edge selvage stitch. We've got our duplicate stitch that we created on the wrong side using our slip one yarn over. And we've now got the stitch that on the other side was going to be BRK'd or brioche knitted, which is where you knit the two stitches together. So I'm sure you're seeing there's a pattern here. There's not much to it. We're just going to work this exact same system of knitting the first stitch regular wise, brioche knitting or knitting these two stitches together, bringing the working yarn to the front, and slipping one with the yarn in front. Knitting two together, 
bringing the working yarn to the front, slipping one purlwise with that yarn in front. And once again, we're going to continue that all the way across the right side row and all the way across the wrong side row, kind of ad nauseum. But come on back when you've worked for a couple of rows and we'll talk about how the pattern of this works. Okay, so now that we're back, I've knit eight rows of brioche rib. What that actually translates into is four rows if you were to count your vertical stockinette column stitches. Uh, every time you work a right side row, you're only working half the stitches because you're slipping the wrong side. When you come back the other way, you're actually finishing that row. So if you were to try to create, for example, 10 stockinette column stitches, you'd actually need to work 20 rows. Um, obviously these stockinette columns look very standard for a rib. If you look carefully in the valleys, which unfortunately I can't zoom in very well or we lose focus, but if you look in the valleys here, it looks an awful lot like the rib or the pearl side of a rib, sti uh, rib stitch. Um, but if you look really carefully at those pearl bumps, there's actually two uh, yarns there. One is the slipped stitch and one is the actual stitch that you worked previously. So that is one color brioche rib. Um, our next video is going to be on two color brioche rib. That's where things get a lot more fun. You actually have to work each row four, er, four times, if you will. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Come on back. Hope you learned something. Happy knitting.